and tonight uh, we are going to cover a few points. So, who am I? It's the first point. I uh, run this question every morning before the mirror. And uh, why development is, it sucks so much. What is it? I don't know if you feel like that, but I feel that every morning I have to <clears throat> look around and find something new that is like hitting on me. And is there a way to fix this? Is there a way to get it uh, under control? Sorry? Ah, can we fix it? Is, uh, is, is the question for tonight. Hmm? <laughs> if we could, <laughs> if we could, I'm open for suggestions. I'm open for suggestions. So, uh, how many of you are developers tonight? Raise your hand, please. Almost all of us are. Good. How many of you knows Docker or use Docker today? Quite a few. That's good. So let's start with uh, who I am. I am just another web developer. That means that since 15 years uh, I am uh, running uh, through things that are meant to move from my computer to the online world where everybody can see it, th those informations. Okay? And uh, how things move from my computer to the online has changed a lot. I've been struggling so much to explain my my family what I do. In the beginning, they thought I was uh, unemployed. That's basically they couldn't understand what uh, what I used to do. That was in Italy, ten to fifteen years ago, and I tried so much until the moment uh, somebody made uh, a nice uh, video. Let's see if it works. This man right here is my great grandfather. He's the first cat herder in our family. Herd cat. I got this one this morning, right here, and if you look at his face, it just ripped to shreds, you know? You see the movies, you hear the stories, it's, I'm living a dream. Not everyone can do what we do. I wouldn't do nothing else. It ain't an easy job, but when you bring a herd into town and you ain't lost the one of them, ain't a feeling like in the world. So that was a commercial uh, for a cloud-based, uh, a cloud solution company or something like that. But that's actually how I feel about my profession. I have to take under control so many things altogether that sometimes I go crazy. Let's take an example. Let's take uh, something that probably all of us knows, WordPress. WordPress is uh, one of the most widely used uh, CMS uh, on the web, and uh, it should be easy, isn't it? It should be just straightforward. But if we take a look of what it is, or uh, how many informations do we need to master in order to run a simple WordPress blog, do you remember when you started to work uh, as web developers? I mean, did you know everything? Let's just take a ride about that. If we say WordPress, uh, we mean PHP. It's a language. If we say PHP, we then need to have MySQL to run a database for WordPress. And we want uh, to have, oh, yes, I mess up. So if we say PHP, <laughs> we may, I was looking at the wrong one. So we mean Apache, yes, a web server, and then we need MySQL for the database. And then, uh, OK, we're running on Linux. Uh, and then uh, we want uh, something like a Gulp grant to build our assets. And of course, we want to use uh, JavaScript, uh, just the next version, because it's uh, always evolving. And we are going to use probably Webpack or something like that to build it. Uh, and uh, Node.js and MVM and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of uh, keywords that uh, we probably don't even think about it uh, today, but uh, a junior developer needs to learn all this thing. Okay, it's a lot, and that's just for a simple uh, WordPress uh, blog, no more than that. So I think that nobody likes <coughs> all this uh, overwhelming knowledge. Can we just, uh, could we just uh, 
make it more simple. So if I am a, a front-end developer and uh, I don't know, I need to change the background color of a page, uh, I just open a simple CSS file, change the color, save it, and it works. Well, yeah, of course, <laughs> this is possible thanks to Docker that uh, abstract away from uh, our attention uh, the how does it work problem. So we have uh, something that work, that works, and we just have to modify it. But the how to, the how does it work, uh, is the is, is not our business anymore. If we are not the one that creates the solution, of course. So. Something as complicated uh, like uh, WordPress uh, becomes just uh, another application, just one of the apps uh, that we have uh, in our pocket, in our uh, mobile device. <coughs> and uh, as an app, as an app, as a single entity, we can uh, simplify how it works uh, with some uh, uh, verbs that we can apply to it. Something like uh, app, please start. Just start. How does it start? I don't care, just start. Or of course stop, or upgrade, or backup, or restore. Okay, so we take the whole complexity and we just apply a couple of verbs to it that makes it to work. The advantages uh, to this um, approach are uh, many. I list here some of those, which are that we can uh, we can take a service and use it uh, as a, a Lego brick, you know, to compose an application. We just need to know the interface between uh, the bricks, which is always the same, so to put it together. We have uh, an environment as a software, so everything that describes uh, what uh, our application needs to, to work, like the Apache, MySQL, and so forth and so forth, is described in a file. In a, in, a, in a manifest file or something like that. It's not a programming language, it just describes it. But we can take this file and put it uh, under control, under version control in our Git repository. So we are sure that it will work again. There's no, there's no like a readme documentation uh, to explain what you have to do, which kind of software you have to install. There is a file that it's been executed by Docker that set it up. And we have one single interface to run uh, all our, our uh, applications. Okay, every application will start, will stop, will upgrade, will backup, will restore. That's it. That's all we need to know. We have, uh, we can re uh, get to the point in, to, to in which we have zero setup time. So last time I tried to set up a project like a Node.js project with some dependency. It took uh, me and the guy that tried to hand it over to me, like one day, to, to get it run, because of particular versions of uh, Elastic, Elastic Search and stuff like that. Uh, we put it under Docker, and now it takes, uh, what, five minutes if you have a slow internet connection to run it. Okay, so from one day to five minutes. That's the setup time uh, that uh, we, we, <laughs> we, we avoid with, uh, thanks to Docker. We can uh, <coughs> enjoy target release, so whatever goes to GitHub and is uh, tagged as a release, uh, it will be taken into production. And because a release will uh, contain both the source code of our application and the source code of our environment, uh, we can uh, in any moment uh, roll back or even just take a look how it was our application some time ago. <laughs> that leads to more predictability of how our system works. We can be sure that something will work that way because we have to describe it that way. And uh, more or less, thanks to Docker, we can uh, actually start to say it works on my machine and be positive that it will work uh, on somebody else's machine. Okay, that's something that uh, it's nice to say. And all of this uh, gets to having more testable software. So things that can be uh, proven to work, uh, that and this, I know it works, it will move from my computer to production without uh, major flows. The only drawback is that it's just another tool to learn, okay? Uh, that can be somehow uh, overwhelming, it had been for me.
I thought, oh my God, I need to learn uh, yet another tool. It's not good. But the good thing is that it's uh, very, very easy. It's, uh, it's just a couple of uh, concepts. Um, okay, what's, what's about tonight? Tonight I'm here just to tell you how I run through Docker, how, which kind of uh, uh, problems I had, which kind of solutions I made. There is no right solution, there is no this is the way to do it. It's just uh, experience and I hope that we get to discuss with other people that are using it today in production so to see which kind of uh, different approaches we have to this, uh, to this how to run it. <coughs> I started to, to look at Docker from a developer point of view. So as I told you, my problem was like one day to set up a, a project. Oh my God, no, I don't want to do that. I want to reduce this time. Okay, so the make it make things easier for me as developer was my first approach. And the solution that uh, you can find in the Docker documentation is that you just run something and it will work. That's actually true. If you take uh, something like Nginx or even um, uh, Jenkins, uh, you just uh, docker run Jenkins and you have the whole thing uh, set up. It's not completely true because then you need to give some uh, more meat to the, to the common line. So you start with easy things like mapping uh, a port so that you can actually access uh, what's running into, into the container and then you learn that you have to run it in background so you can do other things while you're doing it. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you don't want to run just one thing. If you want to run WordPress, you need uh, WordPress and you need MySQL. So those are two containers. And then you need to link containers together. It's get a, it will get messy pretty much uh, soon, very much soon. And then you discover that uh, Docker Compose is uh, already there to solve this problem. Docker Compose allows us to describe uh, our services in one single in simple YAML file in which you say, okay, I want to have my SQL that comes from an image and I have my blog that comes from WordPress and is linked to my SQL and has a port. This is beautiful. It's easy, easy to read, easy to run, it's uh, useful. And you're happy until the moment you realize uh, you don't need just one environment, you need uh, at least two environments. And uh, I cannot stress enough at least two environments. One is for development, one is for production. I see the differences. From uh, development, uh, you want uh, tools. Uh, I don't know. PHP my admin is just a simple example that makes, you, makes your life easier when it comes to look what's going on into the database. Gal Plus, again, uh, it can be a nice thing to have. So all the assets are building themselves and you even you don't know even how, you don't need to set up Node.js on your computer. So that's the kind you want logs, you want auto reload, uh, stuff like that. In production, uh, you just want the thing to work uh, probably as fast as it can, and you want backups. You want data to be safely stored. So if, you know, something bad happen. And then you start to consider that you're probably not alone in running a project. You have uh, co-workers. You have people that uh, work with you and if you do something, then you probably want to hand it over to somebody else because you are taking a vacation. So problems like uh, how to populate the initial state of the application. So, okay, it's beautiful. I have my GitHub repository, the code is there, I clone it, I run it and nothing works. Why? Because the database is empty. Because uh, if we take a uh, uh, WordPress uh, is like the main example for tonight. Uh, you have no uploads folder. So you see a page with some empty images and it just doesn't play nice uh, with your expectation. Also, you probably want to have some custom uh, settings for yourself. Which port would you use? I don't know, maybe I like to use 8080 and uh, Camilo likes to use uh, 3000 because it uh, comes from Node.js development. Uh, this is a uh, something that happens every day. You don't want to fight on GitHub, like who overrides, <laughs> who commit, that kind of not so good. So you have this uh, kind of things to take uh, care of when you, when you run a Docker project as developer. I say we fix it <coughs> and uh, 
we got to the production thing. That was the second step and the main topic of tonight. I got it wrong since the beginning, I guess. <laughs> so it should be pretty straightforward, should it? You have some source code in your machine, and this thing should go to the production server and just work. And uh, in order to do that, uh, you start to look around uh, to find tutorials and to read tutorials, and you know, you get some ideas. And they tell you that you should have an image repository. So from your local machine, you build the image, you push the image to this image repository, so then the production server will just grab the image and run it. It's so cool. At this point, uh, you learn that you shouldn't build the image on your local machine. You should have uh, a build server. So you have your source code, you push it on GitHub, uh, a build server will grab it, build the image, push the image, go to production. Even better. At this point, why stop here? You should add a test server. So before, to, before you produce the, 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 the image, uh, you test if everything goes well. Okay, and it can be pretty, can get pretty messy until the moment uh, you start to, to, to think wide, okay, we will have this image and many different uh, environments and uh, some automatic automated backups that uh, fits the staging server later on. At this point, you find a keyword, microservices, and you learn that everything should be done in microservices today. It's so cool. And why is that? What is that? You learn that you can use some uh, cloud uh, providers that uh, makes everything go simple and smooth for you. So Docker uh, give, uh, gives us uh, the hub and the cloud. So at this point, our source code will, be bu will, be, will build uh, an image uh, in a Docker hub, which is a cloud container for images in which you can push your stuff. We're going to see that later on. And this thing uh, will use uh, Docker Cloud uh, that uh, is uh, a very interesting project uh, that takes uh, a file like uh, the Docker Composer and it grabs images from one place and distributes the images into containers through multiple nodes uh, spread all around the globe uh, from uh, Amazon Web Services, Digital Oceans. At this point, your application can be deployed to thousands of servers, and you feel the power in your hands. Yeah, we can scale up to thousands and thousands of nodes. Each node is a computer, of course. We can hand countless requests per second. We don't fear it. We have full redundancy. We have zero downtime, and we have continuous deployment. That's what we. I mean, that's what you read around the uh, internet when uh, you start to search uh, Docker deplo deploy Docker to production. That's what you get. And uh, yeah, that's just a beautiful theory, at least from my experience. It seems straightforward. It's, uh, it's super interesting. Uh, the truth is that uh, I found out I work for a media agency. I. I have different needs. And uh, when I looked around uh, myself, many of my colleagues are working for media agencies. So of course, out there, there are companies uh, that need scalability. They need super big systems. But if you work in a media agency like me, you have different needs. And uh, what you need uh, is to run uh, many projects, not one huge project, just many little projects. Probably okay. All these projects have uh, different uh, technologies, maybe. Okay, they can be very different from each other, and you have uh, different people working on it. The, those projects, uh, if you are lucky enough, they will push code to GitHub. It's not always like it like, like this. Believe me. Then uh, you probably have uh, one server or some servers in which you want to run those projects, and Maybe you can't even afford uh, one virtual server for each project. So you need to put more than one project into one single server. Okay, It was like shared hosting a couple of years ago. Now it will become a shared Docker something something today. And uh, I stuck here, actually. I had uh, such uh, great expectations out of uh, Docker Cloud because it 
it's straightforward. It works very well until the moment you try to put uh, two containers that uh, pretend to use the same uh, port, like 80, just to say, just to name one, and you have just one node. It won't work because the Docker Cloud uh, will uh, deploy your application through all your nodes, but it will use one port from each node. So you cannot actually deploy the same service uh, into, into Docker Cloud. Let's forget about uh, proxying and stuff like that. Just keep it simple. It's not that straightforward, not to mention that it's uh, quite uh, pricey. So when I look out, uh, when, I, when, when I just, you know, step back from uh, what the uh, internet offers to me, what the mighty possibilities of microservices, and I looked back, what I, do I really need to, to get my job done? I, I just need to have a fast setup on my machine and a reliable backup, uh, and I need a solution that is uh, just simple to manage, simple to maintain. I went back to the concept of uh, one single application that has just five words, that runs, five verbs that runs on it. Start, stop, upgrade, uh, backup, restore. That's it. Okay, that's what I need. So, <coughs> yeah, keep calm. I'm not doing uh, rocket science. I'm doing an interesting job that uh, I like very much, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not Google myself. Uh, that was um, the moment in which I started to, to work on a small project, like personal project. I call it Docker Humble because uh, it doesn't pretend to to give you the power over the universe. It will just help you to run uh, your, your uh, application or many application through Docker, yeah, from your computer to production. It has some, uh, some uh, objectives or like uh, stuff that I'm working uh, toward. It should give us a zero time. Uh, uh, it should allow us to describe uh, it to easily describe uh, multiple environments uh, and to keep it uh, under source control and it, it uh, provides us a simple interface uh, to run uh, whatever project it's based on docker compose it's just a very small small layer uh, around docker compose is nothing more than that yeah uh, it should uh, help us uh, maintaining multiple projects uh, in uh, one server with full backups uh, that uh, just work and with Git-based deployment, that means that you will deploy your source code, source code to Git uh, and in the production server, you grab code from that. So there is no like uh, FTP up and down of files, stuff like that. Perfect timing. That was for the talking. <laughs> So that was just to give the scope of uh, what we're going to do tonight. Okay. Uh, and now we go to some demos, uh, some code. So let's close this. Okay. Then it should get more interesting. So I prepared uh, two demos, very simple. One is a static web page in which we can see what should be, at least what for me is a difference from development environment and production environment uh, on, yeah, you're right. Let's go back to mirroring. Yeah, Atom. Good. So first demo uh, aims to run uh, a simple web page. Nothing more than that. I couldn't get more simple. Let's, uh, yeah, let's just run it. So I 
now I'm getting really anxious, anxious because it should work. I tried this before coming here, it didn't work. So let's see. As I told you, zero, uh, zero setup time uh, and you should uh, uh, use verbs uh, to talk to your application. So a verb should be something like a humble run dev. So please run my development environment. And uh, yeah, I just took away, uh, yeah, I have a clean uh, Docker setup here. So there's nothing on my machine. It might take some time to download the uh, things while we run the demos. Okay. So you, you run one interface. We are going to use the same command through all the two demos for tonight. Okay. And it will start. Uh, and yeah, it's a web page. It's a static web page and nothing special. Let's take a look how this thing is built. It uses Docker Compose. Docker Compose, uh, how many of you knows Docker Compose or uses Docker, use Docker Compose? Okay, for the others, Docker Compose is just a wrapper around Docker that is provided by Docker itself. It will read a configuration file, a YAML configuration file, and it's able to run uh, multiple containers behind the scene, okay? So, well, right now, this uh, example has one single container, which is an Nginx, uh, um, an Nginx uh, server that uh, show us uh, this uh, simple, uh, simple web page. And what you can do with Docker Compose, uh, you can uh, describe different environments uh, with different files, okay? And you can extend one file with the other with another file. So you can have a, a root configuration that contains the information that are shared between your environments. And then you can add more sophisticated files to just pinpoint the difference between the environments. So this uh, setup, uh, it, uh, it tells that uh, I will have a, a, an Nginx service, whatever, it's just a name. It's nothing but the name that I gave to, the, to my service that will run on uh, one port or actually it will take uh, the port 80 from the service uh, and it will expose this port uh, to something that uh, is a variable. It will be given to Docker Compose uh, from uh, uh, some other configuration. Okay. And then I want to tell Docker what is uh, my development environment. In my development environment, I'm going to extend uh, the, the Nginx service, telling that I'm gonna use an Nginx image from Docker. This is just the standard Nginx image. And I'm gonna map a um, local folder inside uh, this Nginx. And this local for folder, if we go to take a look at it, is this uh, services Nginx HTML. Yeah, I have my HTML file, okay? It's very simple, it's the, this is the source code. So actually in this world setup, uh, this folder here is the source code of my application. It's what uh, me as a web developer, I'm gonna work to produce some value. All the rest is just the environment. The aim here is to be able to focus our job on this folder and not really care about the environment after we set it up. Okay, good. So development, uh, we map things. Uh, so if we modify our source code and reload the page, we're gonna have the, the, yeah, the, the, the web page updated here. That's the kind of environment we want when we work. We modify the file, we reload the page, it's there. Okay, you don't want anything more complicated than this. And then we want uh, to, um, to deploy to production this, uh, this thing here. Uh, to deploy to production, what does it mean? It means that uh, this service, this single service, service should, be, should be packed into one image, and these images should be executed into some server somewhere. We don't really know. Uh, actually, I would like to try to run it uh, on, uh, with Docker Hub. Okay, I, I didn't do that much, so 
let's try to do it together. Uh, somebody here use Docker Hub? Okay, so Camilo take a close look to that. <laughs> okay, so first thing I wanted to try to run the production environment locally, in my local environment. How do I tell Docker Compose which file to run? Oh yeah, in my production environment uh, looks like that. I'm just telling Docker that I want uh, to build uh, an image from uh, a local source folder. And if we take a look at this, uh, it points to a Docker file. That couldn't be more easy. <laughs> I just pick uh, nginx and add to and add my source folder to the nginx image. Do you all understand this file? I just actually have a doubt. It's about the, on the Docker Compose file. Why is it that you're specifying the, the ports there? Uh, because when you run a container, yeah. the you, you you need to map uh, which kind of port you want uh, to expose to your uh, host system. But you don't need to do that locally, right? Yeah. You need to do. Doesn't compose automatically no. To set up the yeah. yeah. Then you don't know how to. The, the, the idea behind uh, this setup is that uh, I would like to have uh, uh, the highest degree of predictability how my application will work. Uh, so, like, uh, in order to set up uh, my environment, uh, I would like to use. Uh, a configuration file, this .env. I've chosen this uh, file to host uh, the the description of my environment because it's the file that Docker Compose will uh, source in order to receive uh, configuration from it. Okay. So when you use uh, when you when you use variables uh, in Docker Compose, these variables come uh, from uh, the environment that you are setting up for the command, and if you don't explicitly set up any, co any environment, uh, uh, Docker Compose will try to source the environment from that file if it's available. Okay, so it's a very cool way to, to being able to take away the environment details, like ports, uh, like, uh, I don't know, node env, all these kind of uh, little details from your Docker Compose file. So your Docker Compose file just describe how your application is composed, which kind of services, and uh, the configuration is even outside that. So when you put it uh, on Docker Hub, you can, uh, yeah, you can give uh, that kind of little small details uh, from the proper place. Well, what is the advantage of having the, the service uh, specification in a separate file for the production and not for the development? Uh, which service? If you, if you check your development, you define the, the image directly in this file and in the production you said you define it in the other docker file. Yeah, because here in uh, in development uh, I'm just using the image uh, that the docker hub uh, gave to me, yeah. like the pure image uh, and I'm mounting a volume into it. So I'm saying uh, your uh, internal path here, please use my host uh, file system path. Okay, in uh, production I will build my own Nginx image uh, that uh, is an extension of the Nginx. So when uh, I will run it, uh, this uh, image uh, will contain the source code uh, of my application, so the HTML folder. Isn't then like a chance that they will have a different version from your development and production then? Oh, well, yeah, I should have done this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's actually, that's actually a, a, a very important uh, thing. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Joseph for pointing this out. In the beginning, a, a mistake that I did, I used to... not completely true. What, if you don't put it, it means latest. Yeah, yeah. But, but the latest, you could have pulled down the latest a long time ago. Yes. If you use latest, uh, you're going to experience uh, some troubles. Because, what's, uh, what's your name? Conrad. Conrad? Because of what Conrad just said. If you pull a uh, latest version of Nginx today, and in one month, we'll try to run it again. Probably Nginx has moved to another version, but in your machine, you still have uh, 1.11 as latest. Okay, so uh, a best practice that I suggest you to have is uh, always specify at least a major and minor version of uh, your images. I wouldn't care much about the bug fix version. It, if they do their job correctly, it shouldn't be that important. 
but uh, major and minor, it should be always explicitly defined in your uh, Docker file. So thank you. Well, Every time you build it, yeah, and that, yeah, especially if you have more, many product, many projects in one server and you want to build it quite continuously. That's so. Yeah, pinpoint uh, the version; it will be good. Also, when you when you put this uh, this version here and you release, uh, uh, you make a release on on GitHub, just a tag. You will be able one year from now to download this tag and run it uh, exactly how it was running today, because you will have uh, described uh, your environment in the best possible and more precise possible way. Okay. It was the version up there. The this is the most unusual <laughs> thing ever. Uh, uh, Docker Composer uh, uh, runs two versions of uh, the structure of the YAML. There is the version one that you don't need to specify, and version two that you need to specify. So yeah, it's just the, the definition of the which kind of structure Docker Compose will expect out of this file. They could guess this thing without the version, but it's a totally different <laughs> argument. You have to set it up. Okay, so the point is uh, that uh, in order to run uh, one file or the other, you should uh, execute uh, your, uh, you, should, you should run Docker Compose uh, more or less like this. Docker Compose, uh, what is, F? Yes. Okay, so F, uh, I want to run the production. Okay, that's the command that I should uh, run. Do you do you see it? Yeah, as this. So y you have to tell Docker the pipeline of the configuration files that you want to use. I don't know about you. I'm pretty much a lazy guy, and I really don't like to write all this stuff. L so what uh, what uh, uh, Docker Humble does for me? He picks up uh, from the environment uh, which kind of file do I want to execute. And if I do humble info, he will just show me which kind of uh, Docker Compose command will generate for me. So the which Docker Compose command to start my system is described uh, into a file that is under version control. That means that this is on GitHub, and if you pull the same repository and you will run the same command, we have the same uh, environment running, the very same one. Okay, there's no possible way to, there is no possible way that you're running one and then running something else because I mistaken the, the command line. That's, that's the whole point about it. Okay, so now I'm stupid, I'm running the, environment, uh, the development environment again. Um, okay, the environment uh, uh, is part uh, of my source code. So in one of the slides before, we saw that when we work together, I maybe would like to override, uh, to override uh, the system, so to run a personal setup. So you can actually write something like, uh, local and just to do something like that uh, and if I say if I check what's gonna happen I know that I will run the production version and if I run it uh, the production version it will build my image locally okay so it will create this uh, package with my source code we have it here and it will run it that's just it. So yeah, it will work the same way. Okay, but this is exactly the kind of software that it will work on production. At this point, what can we do in order to have it uh, available to everybody here? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, gladly. So in the example before, the uh, development environment, uh, I had the system that allows me to work on my file and to see changes right away. Now we built the image, so if I change something and I reload the page, I won't see anything. In order to see the change, I need to stop the system and build it again. Okay. So you can see now he detected that something has changed. He built a new image. And now I have the change here. Is that OK? So production, fast to work on my file. Um, uh, development, fast to work on my file. Production is contained into one single image that I can ship. I can actually export this image and give it to you. So let's try to do that. <coughs> okay. So we saw the environment, uh, which kind of uh, advantages we have. So we can describe the environment into a file again. It's, to me, it's a missing point out of uh, Docker Composer, this kind of ability, which is very simple. And uh, the second thing uh, is about the verbs that I told you before. So we have an application and we have some verbs. Okay. The, the way we can achieve it uh, is uh, through some simple scripts. So I don't know. To this application, I want to give the verb uh, publish. And here I'm jam just describing where I want to publish uh, my application and which version is it. Uh, so it's kind of utility scripts. So in theory, if I run this should build the image, tag the image uh, with uh, major minor bug fix version and pull the thing uh, through up to Docker Hub. So if I go here, I have my image running uh, and uh, the tag is uh, 100. So just to test that this work, I will uh, upgrade the bug fix version, publish it again. In theory, it should, uh, it should push this image to, to Docker Hub. Docker Hub is an image repository. It's just GitHub for images. So when you build uh, this uh, self-contained piece of software that has a, a Linux distribution, Nginx on it, and finally my little source folder, it will be able to be executed by Docker. Good. So I see the new tag here running. At this point, uh, uh, I want to take advantage of uh, uh, cloud, so what Docker offers to me to run this thing. Cloud.docker is an environment that uh, allows me to run images. And it's very well integrated with, uh, with the hub and with uh, providers of uh, virtual servers. So in this, uh, in this scenario, you have some, some stuff in the hub. You have uh, at the bottom nodes. Nodes are machines, like virtual machines, that you can uh, import to the system from Amazon, DigitalOcean, uh, Microsoft Azure, or you can even build uh, a machine uh, on uh, your virtual box uh, in your computer. And if you set up your NAT uh, correctly, you can add uh, your local virtual machine to Docker Hub. It's quite easy. Uh, you can organize those in clusters. Uh, and finally, you will have uh, a service uh, a service uh, facility, which are like containers that you build out of images. And with the stacks, uh, you can describe uh, a, complex, uh, uh, a complex application. It's like Docker Compose here. It's, uh, his uh, syntax is actually very close to Docker Compose. So you can, you can put together multiple containers and deploy here. Let's see what does it mean. So as you see, I don't have any node. I, in order to run this machine, this, uh, this web page, I need a computer, a virtual computer. So I can create one. Uh, and in order to create, I will just create, I don't know, a full cafe demo. 
um, Docker Hub uh, hooks into different providers through APIs. So I just connected my DigitalOcean account. You know DigitalOcean, what it is? It's all good? Okay, so it's just an API key. It's nothing more than, a, it's like it was a, yeah, okay. Like it was a, a, a Facebook application. So, yeah, let's just launch it. So this thing is talking to, is talking to my DigitalOcean account now, and you can see that it's going to create a new droplet for me. It's all automatic, uh, I don't really have to care. <laughs> it will take some time to have it running. Let's see. So th th that's, that's why when you try this, you think, wow, that's like unbelievable. Uh, we're going to have this little page up and running just by clicking around, nothing more than that. It's like, boom, mind blowing. Uh, it, it gets more complicated when you try to run more uh, real world uh, word thing, but so far uh, it should be very, very easy. Let's try, okay, still deploying. Here should be, okay. So a service, let's create a service. When it comes uh, uh, to services, uh, you can uh, pick it up, uh, where is it? Uh, Yeah, basically, in order to create a service, you need an image. So Docker Hub uh, gives you access uh, to all the um, standard images that you can find uh, in Docker Hub. So you just click one and you deploy an Elasticsearch uh, no, uh, service. So you click another and you have uh, whatever you want. Or you can fetch uh, from your, um, from your uh, Docker Hub account. So I want uh, this uh, humble static homepage running. Uh, I want uh, to run it uh, on the emptiest node here. Okay, then it gets complicated, but we don't really care about it. I just uh, need to tell that I want to run it uh, on port 80 from port 80. And that should be it. So it's just configuration based deployment. Okay. And uh, yeah, there we go. We have uh, our homepage uh, online. From here is a matter of connecting a DNS and you will have it uh, deployed. Okay, so is, is, is that easy? It's all is a, a clicking based uh, thing. So last thing uh, about the Docker Hub is wonderful, it's click based, but it's quite pricey. So as long as you have uh, open source projects, it's uh, almost free. But uh, as soon as you want to roll your uh, private repositories, then you're gonna pay like GitHub style. So uh, this other setup uh, that we're going to, to, to do, it involves uh, your own server. So whatever it is, as long as it's a, it's a Linux-based machine. Actually, there are a couple of uh, kernels uh, that are compatible with Docker, so we're gonna use uh, a Ubuntu uh, machine. Um, <coughs> I'm using for this, uh, for this demo, I use the, a Swedish uh, provider, uh, uh, a VMware virtual machine. It, it has uh, 20 gigabytes, I give it, uh, I give it uh, Four gigabyte uh, memory just to have it running. So uh, it's an empty, it's an empty uh, machine. I actually haven't even logged in into this thing. So let's try. I saw your password. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, that, that, that is meant that. <laughs> Carl, come on. <laughs> you promised not to say that. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna do an even better thing. Okay, good. So uh, I never ran this server before. That's the, the, the it's just an empty Ubuntu 16 uh, uh, server on a, uh, running on a virtual service provider, nothing more than that. Okay, 
Um, in order to set up, to set this up as a Docker engine machine, I want to have Docker running and Docker Compose running. Uh, through many error, trial and errors process, I built uh, this uh, script that does the thing for me. So it basically go through create a user, set up uh, permissions, set up uh, all the things that he needs to set up. So I'm gonna. Have you tried Ansible? Huh? Have you tried Ansible? Uh, uh, no, but I, I know what it is. Uh, it was more fun to do that actually. <laughs> Okay, L that's the nice thing. It's it's open source. Please go and fix it. <laughs> uh, I count on that. Your password is open source. My passwords are all open source. Is open source. <laughs> I have no secrets. Come on, <laughs> there's no money in the bank account anyway. So, <laughs> okay. So we're what we're trying to do. What we're gonna try to do is to have uh, a remote machine that is capable of uh, running uh, Docker. Then we move back to my development machine and we, uh, we try to see a uh, WordPress uh, setup. So there is uh, Apache, there is uh, WordPress with PHP, there is a MySQL server, a uh, simple custom theme uh, where uh, the assets like uh, LAS uh, and uh, JavaScript are uh, built, uh, are transpiled uh, with uh, Gulp. It's nothing fancy, it's just, you know, to to have an idea how the things can work. Okay, so this is uh, good. Uh, he gave me my time-based generated password uh, that uh, is gonna be more safe. To save. I'm gonna log out. Uh, Okay, so let's see. Docker, I have it. Uh, okay, so this uh, this is working. That's just uh, as a first uh, proof of concept. Second thing, uh, we move uh, into the example. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna see this uh, locally. Um, as why is this here? We saw this uh, uh, working before, did we? So it's just uh, an, uh, an app, so I can run the same uh, the same verb that I ran before. This is uh, trying to boot the application for me. Huh? Hello. Sorry. Of what? Oh. That's a safety alarm. <laughs> now I still had the other the other thing working, uh, so let's kill everything. <clears throat> Come on. Good. So this should boot my application, in theory. What is DKCC? What is, uh, DKCC? It's, uh, it's a shortcut that I have to kill and uh, remove all the running containers. It's for the value. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's just, uh, I, I set up some shortcut to clean up. You know, I spent basically one month setting up thousands of containers without really know what I was doing, so. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I just have this one 
Okay, so here we go, uh, my beautiful uh, WordPress uh, website, uh, just to demonstrate that is WordPress for real, we can log in. It's uh, admin, uh, admin, the password, this is even safer than the other one. Uh, please bear with me, don't hack this website, okay? No, I deny everything. <laughs> I deny everything. <laughs> it wasn't me, it was a colleague. <laughs> no. Uh, then, uh, uh, because uh, we... So, sorry? Uh, the stuff you still just deployed. No, no, I haven't deployed. This is running on my machine right now. Yes, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, so I prepared a server uh, to, ah. to as, a, as a Docker engine uh, ready machine. Okay. Oh, no, 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 not, not yet. Uh, so <laughs> that thing is uh, ready to host uh, what, what, something, whatever. And uh, this is uh, just uh, to try to, to, to set up a, a WordPress uh, project and to see what, uh, what I like to have uh, as a development setup first uh, and then as a production setup. So as development, uh, I want to have one command to run the, the, the application. The same command that I use to run a single static web page. I use it to run a, a, a WordPress uh, with uh, PHP my admin uh, and assets uh, building uh, building uh, setup. In my services, uh, I have uh, <coughs> my WordPress uh, my WordPress setup uh, uh, with an image that we built just to. It comes from the original, uh, from the official uh, WordPress image. Uh, it has just a, a change to to make WordPress to pick up the theme uh, variation faster than the original image. And then my theme, uh, I have it here. So it's just a separate process uh, where I, that I used to build the theme, where I have some uh, fancy PHP thingy for the WordPress, and then uh, my style source code, which is, yeah, it's uh, not, not everybody can understand this complexity. It's, uh, okay. It's mind blowing. It's mind -blowing. I, I know, I know. Uh, so, so look, 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 look this. Now it's white. I don't know. I, I don't know if you are aware of this possibility of this. That's more. I've heard about it. But I you call it this? I mean. uh, the, the, this is this technology. This technology that I invented. I change. I, I, I name it. It's uh, the background color changer. Uh, it, it's it's gonna. To ah. ah. Oh. <laughs> this is gonna change the world. And uh, you can actually, you won't believe that, it's, you can use different colors. No. Okay. No way. <laughs> yeah. Hmm? <laughs> let's go, okay, let's yeah, check. Do you don't believe me, so. No, I think we've prepared everything. Okay. Wow. Isn't that cool? Yeah, mm. Let's keep it serious, like serious, please, guys. Uh, the bottom line here is that uh, I just run one command hooked into a last uh, source file. You don't know why it's working, how it's working, it's just working. Okay, so uh, as a, you know, as a guy that uh, tried to help uh, junior guys to, to work with this kind of stuff, it's very easy to teach them uh, how to change a background color. It takes no time. It's way more complicated to tell them how to set up uh, Apache, PHP, MySQL on their local environment. Uh, even with MAMP Pro on Mac uh, or XAMPP uh, on Windows, uh, it just takes time. Okay, not to mention uh, Node.js, Gulp, and you have to open a terminal, run this, com it's complicated. It's a lot of stuff, like the many keywords that we saw in the beginning. With this, you run it, it runs, and you can just change things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, basically, this, this whole structure you have also committed into Git. So if, if one of uh, the new interns or something doesn't start working on this, it pulls out a Git repo. Well. Yeah, in theory, they should be able to clone the repo, run it, just clone, run, clone, run, uh, and uh, it doesn't really <coughs> matter. Uh, 
which uh, technology is running. If you are a, a CSS developer, you just look for the CSS folder. You work there. You don't know, you don't do more than that, and it will be cool. You will be productive from day one, from minute one. Do you guys have CSS developers? Yes, absolutely. I am one of them. CSS absolutely. <laughs> I love that. It's a programming language. Don't forget about uh, it. Yeah. So I'm just, I just want to say that if you're a Node developer, then you're a Node developer. No. Have you tried running a fairly large Node project using this strategy? Yes, and I have a couple. Yes, and yes. you have to. Totally. I mean, yeah, well, you're fixed. <laughs> I am oh, fairly. What, 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 he, he doesn't have any problems. I run fairly big uh, Node.js. Thingy in Docker and uh, I know that at least on, on a Mac, if you mount your file system and you have many, many files and you have Babel and everything that you should go through all the files, it takes forever. And uh, there are some tricks where, where you make, make sure that you only include some folders and other yeah. folders into your Docker project. Mm -hmm. and, and when it builds the context, then you get away with it. Or like you build the node modules uh, as volume inside Docker, so you don't mount the node module folder. Uh, that kind of will speed up yes. things a lot. Yes, but what if you want to change your node modules and change packages, you update packages and so on, then you want to get this into the container? Yeah, you do, you do, I, I, I don't know, look. Uh, I, no, 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 I, I show you, so the this. No, 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 but he's, uh, he's asking how to add new modules. Yeah, yeah so if I want to change my package, I sh we do that. And I want to rebuild everything and there's like 50,000 files, and then you run like something like Ember that watches the file system and changes over time. You will totally destroy your Mac. And well, you, you so should. I, I, I have not tried this yet, but there's a project called Docker Sync. Which yeah. uses the Unis Unison yeah. file. I tried it out. Uh, I haven't dug that much into. He offers like two ways of uh, two ways uh, sync, one way sync. So you can use like one way sync for a not. Uh, ho honestly, I don't know what we're talking about big uh, big projects, but uh, I haven't uh, seen much of a difference uh, by using uh, that uh, that project. Uh, that uh, it's a bit tricky to set up. No, I, I just uh, I just mount things inside or like okay now here this is uh, this is ridiculous, uh, but uh, it has no no troubles and uh, I don't know I have a, I have run a, a, a complete uh, React uh, Redux uh, whatever 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 uh, thingy and it it works pretty well it takes a bit uh, to to boot like with uh, the Webpack. Uh, uh, boot time uh, is not as fast as uh, you run it uh, locally, but after that, uh, the watch, uh, the monitor of the files uh, and the rebuild of the fragments is uh, is pretty performing. Uh, but with with that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with that said, uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, I like took the the Docker approach like a religion, like everything needs to run inside Docker. I think it's quite. Uh, Acceptable if you have a, a complicated node thing. You, you you run the node process on your host, and you just build stuff to be executed inside Docker with the rest of the of the thing. If you need it, uh, it's. Uh, you no, no, okay. You always run it. Uh, Yeah. 
Yeah, but the the the, the sync finger. Completely. Yes. But is it only configured to the NGN folder or yeah, the, the node will be the same. So if you bring the node modules inside uh, the uh, uh, AUFS uh, file system, I have experienced a very huge improvement. The the whole node module you don't mount it. The node modules is inside uh, the, the the Docker so file system. No, it, no, you you just look look look. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. Look at this setup. Uh, so I have this uh, team builder here. Is the is the container that uh, runs uh, the the Gulp uh, setup, which is an old application, uh, an old JS uh, application. So this come. Uh, this is just an extension. Uh, 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 extend node installing whatever possible library that uh, I might need uh, under development. So this is just a development uh, image, and. Uh, uh, yeah, I do npm start. That's it. If we take a look what's inside the theme builder, this is this is the piece of uh, file system, and it's just a normal node application. So you have your package JSON that defines uh, your uh, your dependencies, and uh, you set what to do when you start it. And if I want to add something here. Well, I, I tell you, uh, to run uh, to run a complete uh, webpack uh, setup uh, with uh, Babel uh, and all the uh, React, Redux uh, uh, stuff and development uh, tools, uh, it's it's huge. You have a uh, hundred thousand document documents uh, like JavaScript files to monitor. It Uh, so we, we take this uh, later. Oh, we take this uh, well, whatever. It just. Uh, yeah. uh, so what were we doing here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, tomato color. That was the. That that was the. Yes. That was that's where we left. Um, so we have this setup that is uh, working with uh, tools and it's building the assets and uh, it it just works. Okay. Then. Uh, <coughs> I want to build uh, the uh, production version. So if we take a look uh, at uh, the, the Docker, we have a couple of things, uh, uh, basic service. We have MySQL, we have WordPress, uh, we have uh, 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 a storage, uh, uh, a storage uh, container when we map all the, all the volumes. Uh, and uh, another image here, this uh, humble image, uh, it gets us uh, some, uh, some, um, some scripts to do backup and restore. It's where the magic happened. In, product, in development, uh, we add uh, um, phpMyAdmin uh, and we add uh, the theme builder so we can work our theme out. And in production, uh, we don't. We just have uh, uh, the WordPress that it will build uh, from uh, the production Docker file. The difference from development and production is that in production, we actually bring in uh, the theme. Instead, in uh, in development, everything is mapped so we can work on our machine. Oh, come on! This is a this is a demo. Uh, <laughs> come on! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomato comes uh, optimized by itself. Is. <laughs> You can't squeeze it more than that. No. <laughs> so I I I if we close an eye about pinification <laughs> and we <laughs> accept it to deploy, <laughs> uh, I mean, I know the, the um, if we take a look uh, uh, to, uh, on to the, this CSS is huge and uh, we could squeeze it a bit, but let's, let's move on. Okay, so again, here I have my my development setup, uh, and uh, yeah, I think uh, I am quite uh, ready to put this in production. So I can uh, just try. So what do I have here? This is telling uh, my my humble project uh, which. Uh, Docker config to use. 
that's simple. Which port to use for the project? This is th those two are just two variables used uh, inside the Docker file. You can see it uh, uh, here. So WordPress will run on the humble port, uh, and uh, in development, uh, PHP MyAdmin will use the other port. So I have one single point where I define uh, which uh, ports to use from my Mac. And uh, this is quite interesting. Uh, we, we talk about uh, setting up, uh, setting up uh, the, the the state of the application. So a WordPress application is an interesting application because it had a, it has a, a quite complex uh, uh, state. It has a database. It's part of the state. It has a, an uploads folder. It's part of the state. And probably also the plugin folder. We could consider it part of the state, part of the variable data of the application. If we're going to use only external plugins, okay? Or it can even be more complicated because we can have some external plugins that we don't want to include in our code base because we download those and they are with version and stuff. And maybe we have some custom plugins. So it can grow quite complex to define the state. What is the state of uh, our WordPress application? But uh, this way I can show you. We take it down. and uh, try to run it again. Okay, now should run production. Hello. What the hell? It's under heavy development. <laughs> Oh, that's just a script uh, that I used to to boot uh, the application. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's the verb that I use. Uh, I actually plan to change it into boot. That is more cool. But you know, dev is one character less. So at the end of the year, yeah, I can go on vacation with the time I save by one single. Come on. Now I can uh, show this thing. Uh, we'll try to tear down an existing project. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's very simple, uh, and it's uh, the humble thing is just a little small wrapper around the uh, Docker Compose. So it's the minimal possible amount of thing that I need just to uh, describe the environment uh, into a file. That's it. So even uh, which environment to run and which ports and stuff are in, in one file that is under version control and that I can extend. That's it. No, the dot env I commit, that's the, 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 the description that uh, a new developer should receive from the Git uh, repository in order to just uh, run uh, the boot script and start to work with the application. Then when I take this repository up to the production server, I will create a dot env dot local. So a file that is uh, local to the production server and I will, right, yes, okay. So uh, the approach that, uh, that I like, it's just personal preference. When you uh, clone a repository, it should be ready to work uh, as developer. Okay, ready for development, that's it. Then when I deploy it, I extend it uh, for the environment. And that's because I might deploy for production, I might deploy for staging, I might deploy for testing. But where the magic happen is uh, in my developer computers. So they should have the priority. They should have the zero setup time. <coughs> Let's try again. OK, it's running production. It's building the stuff. Then uh, uh, this script uh, now is OK. Now is uh, waiting for the for WordPress to be ready. So here we have the Docker Compose logs, uh, and here is uh, the project uh, logs that is just waiting for WordPress to go up. OK, so now he detected that WordPress is running, uh, but uh, there is uh, no data in, in it. Basically, it received the install page and is uh, running the seeding script. So the seeding script is just taking a state that we distribute through the 
that we distribute uh, within uh, the repository data. So in this case, it's just a dump of the database and uh, uh, yeah, a compressed archive of plugins uh, and the plots. That is the state of this uh, simple application, nothing more than that. And uh, yeah, when it's... I, I, I'm gonna show now. Okay, so look. So let's log in. Admin, admin. So I'm gonna create a new poster. Yo ho. Why save draft? It's not published. Okay, publish. Okay, we have your ho. Okay, this uh, this is a great contribution. I want to back up. That's again for the verbs. So I treat the my WordPress thing as an application, and I just say start backup. Later on, we see restore. Okay, how this is done is described from uh, the application itself. But me as a guy that is operating the application, I just use the same uh, verbs uh, through everything. And that is particularly relevant when I will deploy this application with other applications in the same server. So I can put uh, in my cron job uh, the backup of uh, all the stuff at uh, midnight, whenever. Okay, good. So uh, in, in, in this setup, uh, I'm still working on it. So it will go through a mounted folder. So the backup is uh, basically just taking things outside the containers. So in this production setup, uh, database uh, and files are inside the container. Okay, so I can uh, use uh, like uh, Docker exec commands to investigate what's inside and take out stuff. There are a couple of scripts that does that for me. Okay, so a backup is no more than taking things out uh, in a compressed way and save it uh, locally. Um, working and I have plans to have those things uh, sent to an S3 uh, long iceberg storage uh, layer stuff like that. I mean yeah. simple stuff okay then the demo goes that I delete this thing how do I delete a post uh, yeah my knowledge of WordPress is like a is is huge uh, so okay so I deleted but it, that was a mistake okay my god so I can, okay, Le, just verbs, that's, that's, that's my thing. I, I don't want to think when, uh, when shit hits the fan, I just want to restore the latest possible backup, that's it. Okay, or you can pinpoint which backup to, to, to restore. Uh, Yet another tool. I like that thing. That's why I put the trademark on it. It's uh, it's mine. Okay. <laughs> you can't. You you cannot have it. <laughs> it's open source, but it's mine. <laughs> okay. So that that's the thing. Just the initial state. So when uh, when you run it, uh, it has something inside, uh, and you can back up. You can restore. That's all we need for most of the thing. And if you need something else, you can build it. Shall we try to put this uh, online? Uh, Humble provides just an interface uh, to run uh, uh, some local scripts. Uh, and uh, so like if we take the backup, uh, the backup script, uh, uh, oh, oh, uh, I'm not uh, much of a bash uh, coder, so I'm gonna have so much help from you. Uh, so I'm just telling uh, which, uh, uh, which things to, to backup. So Humble, it provides me some scripts uh, to move file in and out from the container. Yes, but for WordPress, you, when you use different URLs, you have to change different settings and options inside the database. Yeah. Do you have books for that? 
no, no, no. Uh, I, like uh, the, I, I've built a uh, um, utility to to migrate uh, to migrate the database. It's just a couple of scripts. Uh, it, it, the, the, the migration is it runs for queries on the database. So whatever kind of uh, uh, maintenance job uh, that I'm gonna do in the projects that I am uh, managing at my company, I am packing it in Humble. So like for now, Humble has a, a MySQL import export tool. The next project that we're gonna work uh, will have uh, Postgre. So I guess in a couple of weeks there will be the Postgre import export tool. Okay. And it's a tool for myself first uh, that is just there to use if you want to give it uh, a try. So I'm packaging stuff that I use every day. Okay, That's where do you think about changing the domain name? Yes. So when you move from localhost production, you need to change the domain name in yeah. the database. Yes. Yeah. So you yeah. probably easily add it in the So that is my first question. Is, is this part, part hum humble or part of the application? No, it's... Uh, it's uh, yeah. So if I want to use Humble for a great problem, it doesn't use WordPress. I don't need any crap for from you know WordPress migration stuff. I want that only in my WordPress. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Humble just runs scripts from the project uh, directory. So what you have is that when you run this script, uh, you have a couple of uh, variables uh, set up by Humble, like what is uh, your uh, project CVD or some uh, what is the environment, uh, so you can rely on, a, uh, on some variables that are provided by Humble. Okay. So it's very small and that's one to the other. Yes, yes, it, it's not much code. Uh, basically, it's uh, maybe 80 lines of bash. No more than that, it's very simple. Uh, what, what, what? Uh, yeah. So I'm going to try to set up uh, this. Uh. Yeah. But you know, it's uh, well, why? Please do your best not to memorize this password. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, let's do a. a, a I, I I told you about um, like. Uh, oh come on! Am I stupid? We can uh, just go here and pick uh, the repository instead. Okay, so let's try. So we are going to clone the repository in the server. Okay, and then, uh, so I have this thing here, good. I need uh, the CLI. I really haven't set up that server, so it's a brand new server, so I need to set up uh, this. Uh, then I know why this won't work. Okay, so let me do it a different way. G given enough time, everybody can create everything. <laughs> Point is, you don't have time. <laughs> Hubble, it's a telescope now. That's just to set up the the, glo the global command line. Okay, so now I have humble good. So all 
Okay, so here I have my WordPress website. Uh, I have uh, I have my environment file. If I source it, uh, uh, it uh, tells me that it's running in development mode. So I probably want uh, to Camilo. Uh, I, 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 I complain about him all the time, so please. Go ahead, run now or something, right? Oh, uh, guys, since uh, two months ago, I was just a, a humble front end developer. Like, uh, I didn't know anything about uh, server management, uh, never touched a line of uh, bash in my life. Uh, so, please forgive me if I'm kind of rusty here. <laughs> it's a totally new thing for me. <laughs> So humble and uh, I want it to be production. Then uh, I need uh, uh, to tell my setup from where to see the files. I just don't remember the name of the variable. Then uh, So that's about the, ma the migration. So here we're going to use it on a, just on, a, um, a, on an IP. And it was working on my local host, uh, 8080. So I guess I needed to migrate uh, it from uh, actually, I'm going to check uh, how it was before. <laughs> I don't really remember. No, it doesn't says okay. And uh, That should be more or less uh, the environment that I want uh, here, if it's correct. And those two uh, last lines was exactly what he was discussing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, the seeding script, uh, if I'm, if I remember correctly, but let's check just to. Okay, so uh, it has a uh, localhost 8080 as a URL built in uh, in the seeding, and I'm just uh, setting up things so when uh, the system will do the the seeding of my state, it will also migrate uh, from that port to my to the this uh, to this one. That should be it. That's the moment of truth. In theory, it should work. So that's the point that didn't work uh, before coming here. <laughs> so it's a, it's, a, it's a brand new server, so it needs to download everything it needs. It has nothing inside, so now it's downloading my SQL, it will download the WordPress uh, and all the stuff. There are no NPM, uh, no, it's production, so it, it will not run uh, it will not need a node, so it will not run node. It will use uh, the the basic CSS that was in the in the repository. Yeah, I guess it's uh, yeah. yeah. The, the hub thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's totally okay. You, you still have to build your images, put the, put uh, push your images to, to Docker Hub, and then it's a bit more tricky how to do backups, 
how to take data out of Docker Cloud. That is not so straightforward. You can use a command line tool and uh, mount stuff uh, from your command line. It, it's totally possible. Uh, uh, it's just not uh, super easy. So it's easy to have a couple of clicks uh, to the solution that is working. And uh, more or less, uh, you should uh, trust uh, the world setup uh, with uh, all this cloud thing to not lose your data. But to take data outside, uh, is not uh, super easy. So okay. Like locally, you can actually have another container running that runs an SSH server, yeah. mounts your data, and then you can say the command that downloads from there. It's not straightforward. But that's where, where would I keep then like the, the credentials for, for my SQL? Yoo -hoo. Oh no, oh no, no, that's, that's a nice thing. So it's the wrong color. Good, good you noticed. Um, so, okay, here is the things that we changed tonight. Uh, and among these things, uh, there is uh, the style and uh, the lasso with uh, our tomato color. Okay. So I can push it, and if I did my stuff correctly, I can just run the update command. Okay, another verb. I just don't need to know how the, the application will update itself. I just tell the application update, and it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and we have it deployed with the new color. Okay. So the key point, uh, and then we close, uh, is uh, to have uh, a setup. It doesn't matter if it's this project, another project, but for your developers or for yourself too, you should have uh, a very small set uh, of uh, verbs to apply to an application. So it's start, uh, is stop, uh, is backup, restore, upgrade, that's it. You don't need more. What's behind, you don't care, or you care the moment you build your, your application, then you should forget about it and just focus on the color of your application, that is the most important part of the blog. Okay, it's the color. Actually, it's true. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, our customer don't care how this application is made. Uh, what the customer care is this color, is this copies, this text. That's the thing that brings us value as uh, agencies, as whatever we do. And that's the thing that we should focus on. That's it. Yeah. So, so one month was bash and bash. How do you feel about it now? When we met the first time, we were not that confident. Huh? We were not that confident with bash. Well, come on. It's, 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 it's kind of a magical word. You have like spaces that are part of the uh, of the language itself. So it's, it's kind of like, what? This doesn't work. No. OK. Uh, it's already late. So I think it's better to stop here. But there are more ways to, that uh, I'm investigating to, to bring more projects uh, into the same server. So you kind of uh, reverse proxy everything. And I'm building the humble server thing. So you can uh, uh, forward uh, those verbs uh, to the whole set of applications running on a server. And uh, we have this thing in production. Nobody has hacked into it yet. <laughs> Now you know my password is uh, admin, admin for everything. <laughs> I will change it to root, root. <laughs> because, you know, it's one character less. So <laughs> it will be easier for you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Questions, opinions, different approaches. Yeah, yeah. And it saves you time now, right? I tell you that, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's so cool. I, I, I managed to, to upgrade one application from the phone when I was running on the runway with the plane. It felt so good. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
it felt so so good. It's like just a trivial thing, but uh, it, 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 when you have it set up, what what the doctor gives to me so so far uh, is confidence. When I set it up uh, and uh, it's, uh, I test it uh, on my local environment uh, and like the upgrade script uh, is doing what it's supposed to do, I'm confident to execute it uh, on production and I can uh, very much count on the result. Of course, something might go wrong, but it's uh, very much unlikely. And uh, also, <coughs> if, uh, I don't know, WordPress release a new thing, uh, I just change uh, one magical number in my Docker Compose file, and it will upgrade. Same thing for MySQL, same thing for Apache. So the only thing that I need to care of, uh, uh, to take care of uh, is, uh, is this, which I'm open to suggestions. This is the only thing that so far really, really bothers me, that if I start to have many servers, I still have to take care of the host uh, security updates for many servers. And uh, I would like to have even this stuff taken away from, taken away from me. So it what I... Yeah, or actually one step further, you instead pay for um, container platforms as a service. So Amazon is doing container management. Uh, yeah. The, the, that to me opens uh, many different possible discussions because uh, in an agency you also have uh, uh, price models uh, problems. Like uh, as an engineer you would like to have this, 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 and then somebody else uh, tells you, mm, you might not have it, not even this Christmas. So, you know, you, you have to go down to, to what you can... But even for the basic uh, security updates, so then it's something that uh, I will look into. Yeah. And that's also like, if you have a droplet that doesn't have everything you want to install your humble stuff, that would be an answerable. Uh, <coughs> Especially if you have 500 machines. That's what then you could have said, like, I want to install uh, humble on 500 Ansible machines that can do the security patches. Guys, I'm going to show you. Uh, last demo, that's something, it's totally, it's totally, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I warn you, it's built on jQuery, so, so I call it, uh, I call it the manager, this is uh, the manager, so it's, if you forget about this, it's just to see that things work, it's, uh, this is for managers, it's uh, a player, for Docker projects, for Docker Humble projects. So in my ideal world, everybody in the company should be able to run whatever project in whatever branch. So even if I'm working on a feature branch, you as my manager should be able to just run it, test it, you know. If you don't know the project, if you don't know the, the if you don't know the technology, you should be the best possible tester. So let's see this. No, this won't work. Okay, uh, that's because of the dots. <laughs> it will not work. Uh, I, I, I <laughs> 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 uh, come on, I'm still working on it. I will pick. A, I will pick a project uh, from uh, from work. So if the project is uh, on GitHub, you should be able to run it uh, on this kind of thing. It's an Electron uh, application, so it will become a, a multi-platform desktop uh, app, and it's just JavaScript. Actually, it's jQuery not even compressed, not even uh, concatenated. It's just many files, uh, many different files. It felt so good to do that. Yeah. Thank you for coming. So, yeah, it's cloning the repository. So it's cloned the repository, then I can, as a manager, remember I'm a manager now, so I, I can only use one single finger. That's nothing else I can do. So I click uh, the, the, the finger, I see which kind of branches are going on, and I want to check the development branch. Now it's gonna take a while. Ooh. Ooh. Fancy spinner. 
glad you noticed. <laughs> It will come with the 2.0. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, fuck, I have the other thing wrong. <laughs> okay, it didn't work as expected. Let's. But it showed something. Isn't this was it just a point to you? Yeah, yeah no, no, that's because, uh, that's because I have it uh, running here. Ah, it's already running anyway. Did it clash with the port, maybe? No, it just failed to execute this project because the port was already taken. So th at the end, uh, it's so shown. Yeah, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Let's try again. Now there's nothing running. In this case, you don't actually need to have a specific port on your machine. Mm -hmm. If you make even a UI for picking, you could have surfed in through the random port. Uh, that's like something that I have in mind to do for this thing. It's a, uh, this is a super proof of concept. It's like two hours of uh, doing, and most of the time I spent, uh, uh, I spent, no, well, <laughs> the spinner requires some love. No, actually to, 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 to run uh, the, the, the GitHub client in Node.js, uh, it, uh, it had been a bit of a, an hassle. There's no much documentation. There is the full, uh, the full package, but not much documentation. So to have it running was a bit a uh, pain. Okay, so he built it, uh, okay. And I have uh, the project running uh, on my computer, uh, like from GitHub and I can open it here. So that's like playing a full project uh, without even dealing with, uh, with uh, a terminal. So as developers, uh, we should uh, open the terminal and write uh, humble run dev. As a manager, you should use your finger. 